Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Hacker 101. All right, so today we're going to talk about hacking with a bind shell versus a reverse shell, and we're going to use Metasploitable 2, which is the known vulnerable operating system that you can use to test your pen testing on. Um, but before we get started, um, I need I need to give a disclaimer. So um, let me pull a disclaimer up real quick. So I'm um, just so you know, all my demonstrations on Hacker 101 channel are done on my equipment. I own this equipment. I have full permission to do this um, demonstration, right? I do not support any legal activities, and you should always seek permission before you perform any hacking attacks. You know, if you have a client that you're working with, you know, you preferably would have a written agreement and a scope of work um, for pen testing. And that's what I'm teaching you guys here is how to pen test. All right, so be responsible and um, be legal. All right, so with that being said, um, also make sure you watch the video from the beginning until the end. I don't want you to miss any steps. And I'm just gonna, um, in this video, I'm gonna explain to you what's the difference between a bind shell and a reverse shell. And to show you that, we're gonna load up, let's load up Kali Linux. And real quick before we get started, so I'll, I'll explain briefly. A reverse shell, um, is a, a, let's paint a scenario here, all right? You have hacked a, your, uh, someone has hacked your client server or you, you've hacked a box and you set up a program on that hacked machine to connect back to your command and control center, say your botnet, for example. This is what people are using these reverse type connections for. They'll and they will um, hack a machine and set up a reverse connection so it connects back to their botnet. That is a reverse shell. A bind shell is where a hacker has taken control of a server and they've opened up a port and set up a connection on the on the hacked server where it's waiting and listening for you to connect to it. So the hacker connects from the hacker's machine to the bind shell on the hacked machine, right? So you see the difference, a reverse shell, the hack machine connects back to the hacker, a buying shell, the hacker connects to the, buy, the shell on the hacked computer, right? So th that's the difference between buying shell and reverse shell. It's pretty straightforward. And um, I'll show you in Metasploitable 2, it's purposely vulnerable and it has a buying shell vulnerability. So I'm gonna show you the um, buying shell first and then I'll show you how a reverse shell works. All right, so let's open up um, a terminal and let's do sudo su. All right, so you should have Metasploitable 2 installed already in your environment if you've been following my videos. Um, so you will want to know the IP address of the Metasploitable 2 server. And um, we're going to perform an nmap scan. So let's do nmap dash s v. We want to look at the services. 192.168.1.147 is the IP address of my Metasploitable machine. And since we're looking at bind shell, I'm not going to scan all the ports. I'm just going to scan port 1524. That is the port for bind shell. So if you're performing an audit or a pen test on your client's network and you do an NMAP scan for all ports and you see 1524, this is a huge red flag. You want to investigate that and see if you can connect to it and confirm whether if it's an active um, bind shell or not. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and scan my Metasploitable machine. This will take a couple seconds and it'll verify that um, there is a, a bind shell on the Metasploitable 2 server. And then I'm going to show you really easily how you can test that to see if it's um, enabled or if it's, an authentic, if it's authenticated or not. Okay, so in map scan complete, 1524 is the port, and it's open. Bind shell is the service, and it's a metasploitable root shell. So really, you can use a tool like Netcat. I don't know if you've, in another video, you see me mention the word Telnet. You got SSH, and then you got Netcat. It's a way of connecting from one machine to another. So we'll just type in NC for Netcat, and then we're going to type in the metasploitable server's IP address. 168.1.1. Or seven, and then the port number 1524. And then if this bind shell is active, then we're going to we're going to get a shell um, on the Metasploitable 2 server. All right, and you see we're connected to the Metasploitable 2 server. And I'm going to show you. Um, here is the host name of the computer we're connected to. Metasploitable. All right, 
at who am I? I'm root. And let's just do it ls all. And so this is the Metasploitable 2 server. This is me connecting to port 1524, a bind shell that I found on the Metasploitable 2 server, right? So once again, if you're performing any pen tests, you see 1520, port 1524 open, investigate it, right? Okay, so that is bind shell. So let me exit out of that. And then I'm going to show you what... Um, what a um, reverse shell looks like. So we're going to set up a listener. We're going to use netcat for that also. So we're going to. I'm going to connect to my metasploitable machine here, and I'm going to tell this metasploitable machine to connect back to um, my Kali Linux machine using a reverse shell. So the first thing I need to do is I need to set up a listener on my Kali Linux machine. This would probably be your command and control. Um, and we're going to do, so we use netcat. We'll do dash n. We're going to connect via an IP address. We're going to do L to listen, to set up a listener. We want it to be verbose. We're going to specify the port. And we'll just use 5555, right? So we're setting up a netcat listener, a reverse TCP connection. Um, on our Kali Linux server. So now let's go to our metasploitable machine that we have hacked, right? Let's say um, the scenario we hacked this machine, this metasploitable machine, and we want to connect it back to our hacker box, our command and control, which is our Kali Linux server. So on the hacked machine, you know, to set up a reverse connection, um, this is how um, you would set up a reverse TCP connection. So we're just going to connect back. And we would write a program. Um, this is how hackers do this. They'll write a program on the machine they exploit, and they'll tell it to connect back to their command and control. So we'll just do NC. I need to put in the IP address of my Kali Linux machine, which is 1.140. And we're going to connect on port 5555. And we want to open up a bin bash shell, right? So if I hit enter, this metasploitable machine is going to do a reverse TC, reverse TCP connection back to our Kali Linux server, right? All right, this machine is hooked into our Kali Linux server. And from this point, I can do ls. I can say, who am I? I'm root, and let's say host name, metasploitable. Um, let's do IP, IPA. Um, you see, here's the IP address of the Metasploitable server. So we have a reverse TCP connection or reverse shell from our Metasploitable server connecting back to our Kali Linux box. So that is a reverse TCP shell, and we had went over the bind shell. So I hope you understand the difference. It's pretty straightforward. You know, keep an eye out when you're performing pen tests. Look for port 1524. Um, those throw red, should throw a red flag always and then pay attention to connections that are going out of a machine if you see some unusual activity on your network um, from any particular machine pay it, there may be a reverse shell um, that is um, you know taking data out of your network you know through a uh, reverse shell so you know pay attention to any connectivity on your network um, that may be looking that looks suspicious so i hope this was helpful and if you like the video, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Thanks.